I'd like to show you how to set up your machine for machine embroidery um, on the J35. So right now it's set up for sewing. To get ready to embroider, the machine comes with a very small USB drive. Um, this drive has a lot, of, um, a lot of information on it. It has the designs for the machine on it, the embroidery designs that come with the machine. It also has a PDF file on it that has, um, this is called the sampler, and it has pictures of all the designs that are on the stick, and it shares information with you, the height and uh, width and height of the design, how many stitches there are, and all the different color changes. Also, there is a key near the front of the sampler book that shows you um, icons for different types of techniques, embroidery techniques. So this is really useful to know what these different icons mean. So when you see one of these, you can come to the front and find out what that means. The top one, for example, is eyelet. Um, the next one is water soluble. So that we would use for freestanding embroidery and so on. So I would suggest, strongly suggest, that you print this out, put it in a notebook near your machine, and keep it handy because you can't really see the designs on this, si on this size of the screen. So the USB stick also has on it your software. And when you open the box for your software, or when you open the machine box, there is a piece of paper in the box that looks like this. This is your key code uh, down here. Um, so that is the code that uh, gives you a license to use the software. So when you put the software onto your computer, you're going to need that activation code for it to work. Now I'm going to take my USB drive. There's a slot over here on the side of the machine. It's a USB port, and I'm just going to put that USB drive into the port right there. Now the next thing I need to do, and I'm going to leave my sampler here next to me, is I'm going to take the accessory tray off of the machine, and I'm going to move the embroidery arm over here, and attach it right where the accessory tray used to be on the machine. Get my thread out of the way. So it just slides onto the arm like that, and you push it in until it clicks like that. When you're ready to take it off, there's a little switch right here, or a little handle underneath on the side. You pull that in and pull, and pull the arm off to switch back to sewing. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on. It's going to make some noises again. Uh, with most machine embroidery that you're going to do, you're going to need some kind of stabilizer. I'm going to use a tearaway stabilizer today. And to open the hoop, there's a quick release latch right here. I'm just going to flip that open and loosen the screw and then take the center of the hoop out. I'm going to take my stabilizer and lay that on top of the hoop and then take my fabric that I'm going to stitch on and lay that on top of the stabilizer. Now, there are lots of variations on this as you get more and more advanced and do other kinds of embroidery. But this is the basic standard uh, how to hoop to stitch on fabric. So now I'm going to take the center of my hoop. And one thing that's really important to know about the hoop is the numbers are always going to go at the bottom. This is the size in centimeters of the hoop. So it's a 240 by 150. But right underneath the numbers there, there's another one up here. This is the center mark on your hoop. And then this is the horizontal. This is the vertical center. This is the horizontal center of your hoop. And those of you who are pretty good with spatial distance may notice that this portion of the hoop is actually higher, taller than this part. The machine needs a little bit, the robotic arm needs just a little bit of space to maneuver in order to fill up the whole uh, 240 by 150 uh, stitching area. So the hoop's always going to be slightly bigger, 
But in order for you to know exactly where the center is, you need to make sure the numbers are at the bottom because if you turn it this way, this is not center. Okay, so it's got to come down this way. And then just line that up over the bottom of the hoop. If you have trouble pushing with your thumbs, I recommend just using the heels, the palms of your hand. If you get it lined up right, it'll just go right in like that. Okay, so we've got the hoop down. We want the top portion of the hoop down inside the outer portion of the hoop. Then the quick release latch, it's really important that this be relatively loose. So I can do that easily with my arthritic thumbs. And you don't want to have to push hard to close that because you can actually break this latch. Um, the good news is if you do that, it's only, it's not a very expensive fix but um, you don't really want to have to deal with that if you don't have to. And then you can turn the knob to get some tension. Um, your fabric doesn't have to be taut like when you're doing hand embroidery, but you do want it smooth, no wrinkles or anything like that. But you don't want to tug on it and pull the fabric out of warp and weft um, because that what will happen if you do that is that when you take the fabric out of the hoop, the design will automatically shrink that fabric up a little bit and pucker. So that's the main reason you don't want to pull your fabric out of warp and weft. Okay, so I've got my fabric hooped. The other thing I want to show you here is for machine embroidery, we strongly recommend that you use a 60 weight embroidery bobbin thread. There are a couple reasons for that. One is that it keeps um, the back of your design, uh, there's less stitching back there, so it's not quite as dense. The other nice thing for you is that it lasts longer. <laughs> you can get more onto a bobbin that way. So I, we strongly recommend using 60 weight bobbin thread. There are techniques where you're going to want to match your bobbin thread to your top thread, and that's different. But for most standard embroidery like this, what we're going to do today, um, you just want to use a uh, 60 weight bobbin thread. Okay, now I'm going to put my bobbin on into the machine. Again, it comes over the top and to the left or counterclockwise or however you like to think about it. Make sure again that your thread always gets, uh, bobbin thread always clicks into that tension and then put the bobbin cover back on. Okay, and then and the next thing we need to do is put the correct foot on. And I just moved it back here behind me. Sorry about this. So the um, embroidery foot is the U foot. Um, I'm just going to mention this, but right up here, the needle screw, the arm of this foot, when it, you put it on, rests on this needle screw. When the machine comes in the box, oftentimes it's a much smaller screw that's in here. So what I do when I get my machine is take that screw out, put this longer screw in, and then I just leave the long screw in um, so that I don't have to switch them back and forth. But what I do need to do is take off the ankle of the foot and put on the embroidery foot. So I'm going to get my nice long screwdriver here and take this ankle off. I always think it's interesting how many parts of the machine are named after body parts. <laughs> it's a little strange. This is the head of the machine, you know, things like that. It's just kind of interesting how we name things, I think. Okay, so I'm going to get that screw off and completely pull the ankle off the foot, or off the shaft. Now this foot's a little easier to put it on if you come at it from the back because again this arm is going to rest on this screw right here and then you can slide the foot itself around the shaft. I'm going to have to lean over here and get my head in the way. Uh, there we go. Um, so that I can line up the whole for the screw, you don't want to strip the screw, but you do want to make sure that you've got it nice and tight on there so that it doesn't fall off. Okay. All right. So I've got the correct foot on there now. 
Um, when you switch over to embroidery mode, you're going to get a message on the screen that says remove the hoop and attach the embroidery presser foot, which is what we just did. Okay, so I'm going to press the OK button because we've done that. The arm is going to calibrate. There are robotics in here and it has to find itself in the world <laughs> every time you turn it on. Okay, so then it will go directly to look for designs on the embroidery stick. And the machine comes with designs and fonts. Um, we're going to select designs. And you can see now probably why I recommend having the sampler with you. I'm just going to select a really quick design to stitch today. It's going to be design number 16. So again, old cell phone technology, scroll down to, or arrow down to 11 through 20 to select stitch 16, touch OK. And then you can arrow down again until you get to 16. And the DJ, by the way, stands for Designer Jade. So if that's confusing to you, it just is referring to the machine. Press OK, and it's going to load that design for us. Now, when the machine loads a design, our screen, you can see what it looks like here. Right up here, it's going to show you what hoop it recommends that you use. It's going to automatically recommend the smallest hoop available that will fit that that design will fit in. And the reason for that is that uh, the smallest hoop is going to provide you the best stabilization. But this hoop, this machine comes with one hoop, and when you're starting out, it may be the only hoop that you have, which is the 240 by 150 hoop. So I'm going to select, I'm going to change the size hoop, and to do that, there's a button over here that kind of looks like an embroidery hoop. I'm going to touch that, and it comes up to hoop size first. I'm going to touch the arrows, and 240 by 150 is at the top. That's the one I want. It's highlighted in black, so I'm going to touch OK. And now it's telling me to put that hoop on. So I'm going to. The, mach the machine has an extra high foot lift that you can lift the foot up to get the hoop in there if you need to. And then you take this plastic piece right here, slides in between the plastic and metal portion of the embroidery arm, you want to push it in until it clicks, like that. You don't ever want to push this button down while you're putting the hoop in. The, this button is intended for you to use to take the hoop off, so I'm going to push down on the button and pull it toward me to take it off. To put it back on, don't push the button. The reason that you don't want to push the button is if you push that button down, it would, it'll be possible for you to push the hoop in too far and you could actually end up stitching onto the edge of the hoop, which you really don't want to do. So push it in until it clicks, and you're ready to go. We're going to pre press OK to say that, yes, we have the correct hoop selected. And some other things on the screen that I want to show you include, this is the total number of stitches in the design. Where the little spool is right here, see that looks like three little stitches? That's for the, the number of stitches. The little spool here will show you how many colors are in the design. This is a small design with one color, so we are in color one of one color. And down here, it's going to show us we are on ready for stitch one of 772 stitches. 43 and 26 show us where we are centimeter-wise in the hoop. If we want to move around in the hoop, you can do that with these arrows. So if I want to move the design closer to the bottom, place it elsewhere in the hoop. I can do that using the arrows here on the screen, and you can kind of see that little design moving around. This is going to be a leaf, so I'm going to leave green in. Then I'm going to put my foot down and press the Start Stop button. And I tend to hold on to this thread so it doesn't get pulled down into the bobbin. Um, hold on lightly to that, and then it will stop so I can cut my top thread, put the foot back down, press OK, and then press Start Stop again. And it's going to stitch the design. 